As you can see, argument reconstruction will often require some behind-the-scenes examination in order to reveal hidden complexities. We come now to an important additional point regarding arguments, the recognition that argument structures can be scaffolded. That is, we can build upon arguments within arguments. We call these extended arguments. In such arguments, we find sub-conclusions that function as premises later in the argument's presentation. It's as if we were chaining arguments together, with the conclusion of a previous argument becoming a premise in the larger argument. Take this example. A short sale is as bad for your credit score as a foreclosure. Anyone with a foreclosure will have a low credit score for years. Since Bob just completed a short sale of his house, he'll have a low credit score for years. Notice that at least one statement is both a premise and a conclusion. Here's the extended argument reconstructed. Premise 1. A short sale is as bad for your credit score as a foreclosure. Premise 2. Anyone with a foreclosure will have a low credit score for years. Unstated premise 3 also functioning as a sub-conclusion. So, anyone with a short sale will have a low credit score for years. Premise 4, Bob just completed a short sale of his house. Second, final conclusion, so Bob will have a low credit score for years. Here, we have an argument within an argument. The first argument's conclusion is that anyone with a short sale will have a low credit score for years. This Subconclusion later becomes a premise within the larger argument whose conclusion is C2. There are three things to note about extended arguments. First, there is at least one subconclusion in the argument. Second, the subconclusion functions as a premise in the larger argument. And third, any subconclusion which fails to follow from its premises can't be used to further support the subconclusions or the main conclusion in the extended argument.